Okay, now we're going to talk about bradycardia. So this is our PALS 2010, bradycardia. And when they talk about bradycardia, they're talking about people who have bradycardia and cardiorespiratory compromise. So they have a pulse, but they have uh, poor perfusion. If they ever lose their pulse, then you need to go to the, to the uh, algorithms that talk about pulseless arrest. Now, you'll remember from one of the other videos we said that the thing that often causes arrest in kids is a uh, pulmonary arrest. So they say the first thing you want to do is identify and treat causes. And so take care of that airway and that breathing, and that will hopefully fix things. While you're doing that, you get to put them on oxygen, a cardiac monitor, put in an IV, and get an EKG if you have time, but don't waste time doing it. Now, if that does fix things, then you go over here, just you know, support ABCs, give oxygen, observe, and you might want to consult expert, meaning maybe admit them and peds cardiology could see them or, or someone else. But if it doesn't get fixed, so cardiopulmonary compromise continues, then you move here. And they define cardiopulmonary compromise here uh, as a low blood pressure, altered mental status, or shock. And that's actually just written right next to it. So, right there. So at this point, we've addressed their airway, their breathing, and we see that, oh, look, they're still compromised. We come down here. If their heart rate is less than 60 and they're compromised, then you're going to want to start CPR. And though this diagram doesn't mention it, the uh, accompanying manuscript does, and it says that you're going to want to do CPR for two minutes, and then you're going to check again to see if the bradycardia is still going on. And if it does, if it is, then you're going to want to give epinephrine. And as we talked about in the drugs lecture, there's two doses. There's the IV and the IO dose, and then there's the endotracheal dose, which is ten times more. Other drugs that you can consider giving are atropine. And again, you can give that IV or IO, and here's the dose, 20 micrograms per kilo or 0 0.02 milligrams per kilo. And uh, you remember, we want to give a minimum dose, because if, if we give less than this, then we could have a paradoxal bradycardia. And there's also a uh, maximum single dose listed here, 0.5 milligrams, which is what we're now call, giving to adults as well. So let's say you've given epi and you've given atropine and that doesn't work. What do you try next? Well, you could try transthoracic pacing or even transvenous pacing. So if I have a patient who's bradycardic and not yet unstable, what I often do is put the pacer pads on them just so I got it there just in case. Because uh, when they're unstable, that's not the best time to put it on. But if, if you don't have the choice, then you, just, then you could try transthoracic pacing and put the pacer pads right on them. And pacing is particularly effective for patients in third-degree heart block or sinus node dysfunction. And, it, and we're talking again of patients who are not responding to airway and breathing. Now, pacing is not so helpful in patients with asystole or cardiac ischemia, but uh, I mean, if you don't know, I would probably just go ahead and pace them, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, it do it's not going to work, but it's better than not trying. So in review, if the patient is bradycardic and they're unstable, and you'll remember that unstable means that they have low blood pressure, altered mental status, or other signs of poor perfusion, like you know, of shock, then you're going to, first thing you want to do is fix the airway and breathing, because that's usually the cause in kids. And you're going to do our typical I ER mantra, IVO2 monitor, and get an EKG if you can. And if they're still unstable, you're going to do two minutes of CPR before you check again. Can you tell that I love that circular diagram? So after the two minutes of uh, CPR, if they're still unstable, then you're going to give your epi. And you'll probably be continuing CPR. Though they don't mention that you have to do it like they did in the, the pulseless arrest. But you're going to uh, give epi first, do CPR, then give atropine. They don't really say that, but that's kind of how they're laying it out. And if atropine doesn't work, then try pacing. And that's it for the bradycardias. And so I'll see you with the next video.